Hey, I'm Creech. This is Creech and Cars. While EVs have been gaining traction over the past few years, one major issue around them is cost. Because of the high production costs associated with the cars, most of them have had to be branded as luxury cars to justify the price. So with that in mind, one thing to look for in the future is the cost of EVs going down and the introduction of more entry level EVs. EV startup Fisker is planning on releasing a sub $30,000 compact electric SUV. So today, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about the Fisker Pair. Pair stands for Personal Electric Automotive Revolution, and the Pair is a compact 5-seater crossover or SUV, whatever you want to call it. Fisker is considering it something different from the myriad of small crossovers, so they're not very clear on the market position, but the Pair is designed for mobility in and around cities and dense urban areas where range is less of a concern and the ability to easily move around and park in high traffic areas is the highest priority. First, let's go over the design starting with the exterior. The front end of the Pair shares a lot of the design characteristics with the larger Ocean SUV. It has a similar looking grille design on the front which I'm a huge fan of. It also has Pair written out in the front and that is lighted as well. The Ocean has that and I think it's a really cool feature that Fisker does. The lighting and wheel design also looks pretty similar to the Ocean. Past the front doors is where things start to look a little different. The rear doors are obviously very small and there's a tiny triangular window past the seat pillar. The rear looks like a smaller version of the Ocean as well with an upright back end and a little roof spoiler, although the lights do appear to be a little bulkier than on the ocean. The rear end design should increase the cargo area a little bit with the more squared off look. Maximizing cargo room and overall utility is a big deal with a car that's already so small, and it's clear that Fisker prioritized that. As far as the interior goes, Fisker hasn't really released official pictures to show us what the production model would look like, but we can take a look at the ocean's interior to see the general direction that Fisker wants to go with its interior design. Fisker says that the visibility is very important to the design, so you can't expect good visibility all the way around the car. Fisker plans on implementing a wraparound front windshield for great visibility up front, and because of the lower price tag, the pair may share a lot of the overall design with the Ocean, just with cheaper materials and cost cutting in certain areas. Fisker also says the pair will offer clever storage, and we'll take a look at some of these storage features later in the video. Now let's go over some specs for the pair. The pair will ride on Fisker's SLV1 platform, which was developed in-house. This is a new platform for Fisker, and Hendrik Fisker has said that there are two other models in the works that would use this platform. Fisker hasn't released any horsepower or torque numbers, but I would expect the pair to only come with one motor and have somewhere around 200 horsepower, maybe a little more. There will be at least two options for battery packs. We don't know the range for the base model, but the extended range model, which Fisker calls the Hyper Range, will have over 300 miles of range per charge, which should be plenty considering they're targeting the urban market. While the base pair will be more stripped down in terms of features when compared to the Ocean or some other more expensive EVs, it does offer a couple pretty cool features. Some have already mentioned like the wraparound front windshield and the hyper range option, but Fisker also plans on implementing what it calls a Houdini trunk as opposed to the typical rear hatch. Fisker hasn't been clear on what exactly the Houdini truck is, and they're definitely using the mystery to build some hype. However, I can kind of give you a guess as to what the operation of the trunk might look like. Because one thing Fisker has been clear on is that this vehicle is designed to be used in tight, congested situations and make the best out of the limited amount of space. So with that in mind, I think it's safe to say that the hatch or trunk will open in a way that wouldn't protrude from the car's normal dimensions. Basically, this could look something like the hatch sliding up onto the roof or within the roof or the hatch could split and one part goes down into the bumper and the other part goes onto the roof. Like I said, that's just a guess and we'll just have to wait to get more detailed information. Another cool feature that would likely be an option on the pair is a solar roof. I talked about this with the Fisker Ocean and basically it's just a solar panel for a roof. While the car's sitting in the sun, the solar panel can recharge the car's battery. With the Ocean, Fisker claimed the roof could provide 1500 to 2000 miles of range per year under optimal conditions. So this is a pretty cool feature to have, but I would expect it to only be available on the top trim for the pair considering it's a cheaper model. So that's pretty much everything we know right now about the pair, but how does it stack up to the competition? 
At the sub $30,000 price point, the pair really has two main competitors, the Chevy Bolt EUV and the Nissan Leaf. The pair is a little more expensive than both of those, but the pair also seems like it would have a few more available features, and it's a little more unique in terms of brand and the image that comes with the car. I would expect performance to be similar uh, across all three models, and that's just not really important to the people who buy these cars. This is a pretty hard comparison to make because we just don't know that much about the pair in terms of specifics, but Fisker does see its smaller platform as being a huge volume seller in the US and abroad. Fisker is projecting 1 million unit sales by 2027 across the world. You can reserve a pair now for $250. The pair will be built by Foxconn in Ohio, and production is expected to begin in the second half of 2023. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is part of a series on the channel called Startup Showcase, where I take a look at new startup car brands and their models. For more content like this, check out the Startup Showcase playlist and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.